Welcome to Reptilian Diaries. I'm Frank, and we do reptiles here. West Texas, Volume 3. This is the last one. It's been an epic trip. It's taken a long time for me to put these out, but this is the final, the finale, if you will. This is a good one. I mean, the targets, you guys already know them. It was the Big Ben Gecko, uh, Trans Pecos Rat Snake, Gray Banded King Snake, and then there's a bunch of other stuff that, you know, we really wanted to see. Check it. Good morning, or actually good afternoon, buenas tardes. It's 1.13 p.m. We are in Presidio, heading uh, heading east, actually. Uh, we actually, we're staying in Presidio the past few nights. Tonight we're going to be staying out further east in the uh, Big Bend area. So right now we're going to drive over and see about checking in a little early and getting set up. And then tonight, we're gonna head uh, kind of northeast, just because it's been so damn hot down here. So we're gonna head northeast, try to get up into the, uh, I wouldn't say the mountains, but just higher elevation. It's gonna be cooler up there. Uh, we might do a late afternoon drive to look for some tortoises, box turtles, hognose snakes, stuff like that. And then tonight, we're gonna do more cut walking, uh, a little road cruising, and just more reptile stuff wrap up of last night. Last night was super slow, but also it was really dope because we found our first uh, Transpecos rat snake, which is Bogartophus subocularis. Super cool. Uh, we found that Mojave. What else did we find? I think a ground snake. And uh, the turtles were fun. Yesterday was fun. Slow herping, but uh, really fun. So we will be in touch. We got a little bit of a drive to do and uh, we'll get back to you. dope is that so we made it to our new spot really good herping around here really good herping to the north so we're gonna head north uh, tonight and hit some areas up there and we will see how we do this is home for three days and after that we are done with the trip and heading home so so far it's been really good but difficult it's been slow but good so wish us luck we're gonna hop in the car get something to eat and get it Right, West Texas style. Greggy just got himself into a big old Aatrox. Yep. Big, big old gal. Yeah. Big old friggin' Aatrox. Woo! Stop, take a piss, and this is what you find. All right, we just got to our cut. We met up with our buddy Dominic. He's a bug guy. We'll show you him in a second. But we're gonna uh, we're gonna start walking this cut. See what we can find. Cut hunting. <laughs> this is the homie Dom. We met What's him. Up, guys? He's a bug man. What's your Instagram? Uh, Dom things. Dom Basically things. Basically, follow it for a bunch of bug content. That's right. We'll uh, actual cat content. We'll flash cat content. <laughs> we'll flash the bug at the bottom, right? He's gonna catch bugs later with his mouth. He said. So we'll see. <laughs> what do you got? Same situation. Different snake. Different snake. Greggy's got something over here. Nocturna. No shit. Shaking right now, guys. I'm shaking. So <laughs> that shit is crazy. That shit is amazing. Lampropeltus alterna, the gray banded king snake, literally the crown jewel 
of Texas, if not North American herping. Epic, fucking epic. Greg spotted him on the cut. Greg gets the love, killing it. Me and Dom were up on the roof, just <laughs> talking like idiots, talking about peyote and shit, and this fool's finding Greg man <laughs> <and> snakes. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs>
Make sure the rocks are not too hot, obviously, before you put the reptiles on them. Like these rocks are super hot right now, so I'm not gonna put any animals on them for a while. But I've gathered these rocks, I've stacked them up. So where, you know, it looks natural, plus there's a flat area to place the reptile on it once you're ready to photograph. It's really all in the details. So like grabbed a little dead branch or dead grass here, got a little piece of a choya here, got uh, creosote or whatever this is here. And just really, you know, you just really want to make a little slice <clears throat> of the habitat of whatever you're filming. So, you know, if I was filming a, a salamander or something, I'd obviously go and get a, a rotting log and some, some dirt and whatnot. But since we're filming these rock dwelling reptiles, make a small pile of rocks, get your, uh, your seasoning, I guess I'd call it, and you're good to go. Now you can photograph your animal in a controlled setting, get the shot you want, take all this stuff when you're done, put it back outside, you've got good shots natural looking shots, the animal didn't escape, without you getting a shot, you can release the animal and uh, go about your way, post your Instagram or whatever you wanna do. So, in a little bit we'll go through how I do some photos. I'm not gonna go crazy into it, but we will do just a quick little rundown of how to shoot a nice, well-lit macro shot. Alrighty, so we're hitting the road, do a little drive. We're gonna go down to the border uh, along the Rio Grande River, kind of the other side or actually on the other side of the Big Bend National Park along a Mexican ghost town. We've got, we've kind of mapped out some areas where we think that uh, the Big Bend geckos and also probably gray banded king snakes and sabox and that kind of stuff will be down there. So take a little drive, see what we can do. And uh, we'll talk soon. Check the desert, beautiful. Mine, I saw that bird shit all over the window, or not bird shit, but dead bugs. <laughs> right. That's an abandoned border crossing. It's all blocked off. We're down here on the border. And, uh, I don't even know what this town is, La Linda or something. There's a ghost town over there. Pretty cool. Rio Grande is right there, so this is the border. This is where we're gonna be hunting reptiles tonight, up on the road a bit. Ready, Greggy? You betcha. We've been hitting cuts all night, haven't found shit. Finally, we found a little uh, Hypsiclena, a little night snake. These guys are super inoffensive little snakes. We've got a, a different species of Hypsiclena in California, but these guys are the Texas variant, pretty dope. These guys are lizard, mostly actually only, they're gecko eaters. So out here, these guys are eating Coleonyx brevis. The ones in California eat Coleonyx variegatus, but cool little snakes. Like I said, inoffensive, pretty common. off the road and uh, keep going, slow night. So we just found a long nose snake, Rhinochelis leconti. These guys are in California also, but never seen one in Texas. Check it out. That is a large sub -op.
walked up on a beautiful subocularis. All right, guys, so that's it for the night. It's 5.30 in the morning, just got back. We hunted a couple more cuts. We didn't find anything else, but tonight was dope. Two sub ox, long nose, night snakes. Um, I think that was it, but fun night, real quick. So we're not herping in the day at all because we basically sleep all day and it's way too hot to herp in the day. So before you guys ask like, oh, where's all the diurnal lizards? Sorry, I'm not, not after them. It's too hot. So they're just, they're not even out. Anyway, it's been an amazing trip. We found a lot of stuff. We'll talk tomorrow. Alrighty guys, what's happening? It's, I don't know, the next morning, whatever yesterday was, yesterday. We got two sub ox, it was pretty dope. Today, we've been chilling, I'm super tired. It's just been, staying up all night's crazy. Even when you do sleep in the day, it still it wrecks you, so. I'm pretty tired. I'm gonna do some photos here in a little bit, like we talked about, using that little setup that I made over there. I'm gonna do that today. We're gonna do some uh, cuts tonight, some walks tonight, and then we're out. We got a 16 hour drive tomorrow, so it's brutal. So, we'll be calling it an early night. Probably herp till one or two. Sleep till six. Get out of here by seven. Get home tomorrow night at 11. Oh. Not looking forward to it, but it's happening. So, it's been an amazing trip. We'll do a wrap up on the way home. And yeah, run you through the photo stuff real quick. It's not gonna be in depth, but we'll go through it. And uh, that'll be coming shortly. All right, guys, so what you need is, and we talked about this in the, uh, in the last video, or maybe not the last video, but I, whatever video we talked about it in, I will link it in the description. You're gonna need your DSLR, you're gonna need your macro lens, you're gonna need your flash, which is gonna be off camera, so we'll be using a remote trigger, and we're gonna be using our diffuser. So that's all we need for this little setup here. You want your f-stop to be a high number, you want it to be between about F14 and F22. That's gonna give you the best results. You don't want that milky out of focus crap. On this kind of photo, you want as much as possible in focus. So you're gonna want a high number F stop. I generally like to set my camera at F16. I like my shutter speed to be about one one hundredth of a second or one one hundred and twenty-fifth of a second. So what you can do is you can literally set your camera for that. Go one one twenty-fifth at F16 lock it in leave it at that and now how you want to get your your exposure correct from there is you can adjust the output on your flash and you can adjust the iso on your camera you don't touch the f-stop and you don't touch the shutter speed lock that in and then you can mess around with the flash output and the iso to get your exposure perfect all right so i dialed my stuff in what i'm at right now is i'm at half power on my flash i'm at iso 250 with the f14 shutter speed is one 125th, not 125th, 1 125th of a second. So now we'll start positioning the animal and uh, doing some shots. So don't be afraid to take a lot of photos. You wanna be messing with a lot of things. And also, like I said earlier, to lock in the f-stop, you can, you can mess with those a little bit. I'm just giving you just very basic guidelines for a successful, decent picture. But mess with your flash output, one one, one half, one quarter, one eighth, whatever you need. 
adjust your ISO. Obviously, the higher number of ISO, the less light you're going to need. The lower number of ISO, the more light you're going to need. But the lower number of ISO, like ISO 100, you're going to get a much a better quality picture. You're not going to get as much digital noise in the photograph. So we've been walking these cuts for probably about an hour. Haven't found a damn thing. And Greg, you just walked up on a little baby diamond back sitting at the bottom of the cut. So let's check them out. So that was that. Nothing else. We worked hard tonight, only found an A truck, so that's herping. Anyway, guys, we gotta leave tomorrow morning. First thing. So we're gonna wrap it up here. What an epic trip, West Texas. My first trip here, I'm hooked, I'll be back. Thank you guys for watching. I don't know what's next, it'll be dope. So long night, really long night. It was hot, nothing out. Single Aatrox, that was it. Uh, we called it early. We had a long drive the next day. I think it was 16 hours or something like that I said. So didn't have a problem calling it early. Um, I mean, dude. For my first trip out to West Texas, like, wow. I mean, I've seen other dudes' videos where they're just like knocking off species after species, but Big Ben Gecko, Subok, and Alterna, and the rest of the stuff, like, I'm not even tripping. That was amazing. The big three, we found them. Super psyched. Next trip, want to find the milks, want to find the copperheads. Um, I'd like to see a Baird's rat, like to see an Emery's rat. I don't really care about Tantillas, so I don't, I don't even care if I see those, but... Other than that, man, I mean, I was stoked on this trip. Hope you guys were stoked on this trip. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sticking with me during this time where I'm just not putting out any videos. I got a lot going on, but I'm still here, still making videos. I'm leaving for Baja in just a couple of days. So that's gonna be another one. Thanks for watching. I'll tell you what.